Hi everyone, today I'm doing a retro book review. We're going to take a look at WCW World Championship Wrestling, The Ultimate Guide from DK. So as you know, I've done many videos on the books about WWE that DK has produced, but many years ago, they created this book. WCW The Ultimate Guide. So on the back it says, let's get ready to rumble. Welcome to one of the most exciting sports in the world. Read about the giants of wrestling, including Goldberg, Sting, and Jeff Jarrett. Discover how they train for a fight, what trademark moves they use to finish off the competition, and what titles they've won. Find out about the titanic struggles that go on inside the ring. A place of blood, sweat, and tears, where alliances are made and partnerships broken. So this book is out of print. However, I believe I got this a while ago on eBay. Might be able to find it used on Amazon. When you open it up here, you see a picture of one of the nasty boys. And then Bam Bam Bigelow. Here's the table of contents so you can see what's inside. You can see it kind of has a similar style, I suppose, to the WWE encyclopedia that DK would do later on. Which now we're in to, I think, the fourth edition of that. But this is only 144 pages, so it's a pretty slim hardback book compared to the WWE books, which are way longer. As you can see, there's definitely photography throughout the book. You have an introduction here. And there's a two-page history of WCW. That's a really cool photo there. From Fall Brawl, Hulk Hogan giving the big boot to Sting. There's my buddy, DDP, with Ric Flair. Speaking of Rick, he's the first superstar profiled in this book. You can see even though this book is uh, older, really it, it came out around the time that WCW was about to go under. The graphical styles... Very nice. Of course, you have uh, some random wrestlers that you may have not heard from for a long time, like Crowbar. Remember when David Flair was wrestling? Any of these two page spreads Mike Awesome, Ernest the Cat Miller, Billy Kidman. Getting two pages, how about that? The World Heavyweight Title. Who's Better Than Canyon? Mr. Perfect, Kurt Henning. Really one of the greatest workers ever. Gone too soon. There's the uh, the final set for WCW. I remember I went to the final Nitro that took place in Philadelphia. I believe it was in 1999. And uh, at the time, obviously, I had no idea that it was going to be the last Nitro in Philly. And it was my first Nitro, so I'm glad I went. So you can see the other page we had... Uh, the heavyweights, the heavyweight title, this one's about, you know, the WCW uh, World Cruiserweight Championship. Rey Mysterio, back when he didn't have a mask. Craziness, right? Can't imagine that today. I think he's better with the mask on.
You can see throughout they have these little factoids about height, weight, titles held, finishing moves, things like that. Then they have these random ones with like leg lock. Like why would they waste two pages to talk about a leg lock? It just seems like filler to me. Three count. Setting up. So this is all about the preparation for putting together a WCW event. All the people behind the scenes. You got Booker T, who went on to amazing success in WWE, including uh, being King Booker. Here's Big T, best known as Ahmed Johnson. He definitely had way more success in what was then the WWF. He was actually a really good um, powerhouse wrestler, but he just fizzled out. And you have a little paragraph here about tag teams. As you can see, tag teams are featured throughout this book. Disco Inferno, underrated wrestler, really good. And how could you not love his music? What a weird shot this is. Bird's eye view. That is definitely Hulk Hogan. Is that Lex Luger? I'm not sure. You got Big Papa Pump. I'd argue that Scott Steiner was at his best in the early 90s when he was in the WWF with Rick as a tag team. Because that's when he could really move around well and yet he still physically looked awesome. Then he got all jacked up on steroids, his big pop a pump, and lost his mobility, and I think he got a heck of a lot worse at that point, and hasn't recovered since. Nitro. One thing I miss about WCW is I used to love that they would have these, I don't know if you want to call them stickers or whatever, but you would have these like, overlays, these graphic overlays, like, on the mat. I thought that was so cool during Halloween Havoc and other events, or Nitro. Just, it's just a really cool way to dress up the ring. I know we saw that at WrestleMania 12. I wish the WWE did that more often, because it's just, it's such a cool look. Buff Bagwell. He tried to make it in WWE, but did not. And I mentioned Rick Steiner a moment ago. Here he is. The dog face gremlin. And who could forget the Nitro Girls? DDP's wife, or ex wife, Kimberly, was one of them. Got some randoms here. That's what I'm telling you. You're going to see some really interesting characters in this book that you have never heard of, or haven't thought of in a long time. Training. Hardcore. Toward the end of its life, there were a lot of hardcore matches in WCW. I mean, I think they were really just trying to, you know, emulate ECW, and obviously the hardcore matches taking place in the WWF at the time, and they they were just kind of a mess, but uh, take a look at this trio. DDP, Canyon, and Bam Bam Bigelow, the New Jersey Triad. Slick Rick and Hogan. Brian Nobbs. Fit Finley, who'd go on to a great career in the WWE, especially behind the scenes, in addition to being in the ring. Norman Smiley. Steel Cage. I always thought it was interesting how the Steel Cage was so different uh, in WCW compared to the WWF, right? You had the big blue cage in the 80s and the 90s, it seemed, or late 80s, which I actually preferred as a fan. And then you had this kind of mesh cage. In WCW, sometimes I think it was in Halloween Havoc or something like that. They had the big black cage, which is ridiculous looking. But it was just interesting how cages would differ from promotion to promotion. 
Big Daddy Cool, Big Sexy, Kevin Nash. Long storied career. Scott Hall. He had a great career as well. Obviously, he's got personal demons. He's, you know, overcome, but then he's had setbacks. Wish him well. Valets played a key role in every wrestling promotion. So here we've got Kimberly, Tori, Paisley, Miss Hancock, Daphne. So here's another goofy one, Headlock. What the heck are we wasting two pages on Headlock for? That's just silliness. Jeff Jarrett, J-E-double-F, J-A-double-R-E-double-T. So Jeff is uh, one of those guys who had a lot of success in WCW as well as TNA. In the WWF or WWE, he really didn't. Um, a lot of people say that he, you know, was kind of handed his success because of his father, but he was entertaining nonetheless. Conan, La Parca. Top Rope. Another goofy set of pages here. Who needs a page about the top? What's the top rope? Ooh, I'll open my, open my book and learn more. The Total Package, Lex Luger. I think he had the best physique of all the wrestlers ever. Berlin and the wall. Announcers. You gotta admit, they had some great ones, right? You had Bobby Heenan, Mike Tanay, Mean Gene, Tony Schiavone. I wouldn't consider Mark Madden good, but everybody else is. Hulk Hogan. I saw Hulk Hogan's last match ever at um, Bound for Glory when he went against Sting. I forget what year it was, 2011, something like that. Uh, it was at Temple University. And again, just like the last night show I attended, I had no idea at the time that it was going to be his final match. So I'm very happy I decided to attend. Dustin Rhodes, who's making waves in AEW. Terry Funk. Strap match. Now this one might make sense, right? Because the strap match isn't that common. So sure, if they want to dedicate a couple pages to that, go for it. But top rope, leg lock, head lock, come on. Brett Hitman Hart. Brett was great. Really one of the best technical wrestlers ever. Here's Sid giving a big boot to... Looks like Luger. The multiple photos of Luger getting... Getting his butt kicked. Chris Candido. And Medusa. Thunder. I didn't mind Thunder. I know a lot of people like to trash it. But I enjoyed it. You know, for what it was. I thought it was a good uh, B-show. DDP. Diamond Dallas Page. I've had the pleasure of interviewing Dallas. Becoming friends with him. I'm a certified DDP yoga instructor. And he's really an underrated talent. I mean, he's incredibly gifted, uh, both in and out of the ring. And I enjoy uh, revisiting his glory days in WCW. So it's cool that he gets a nice spread here. Because he was really one of the top champions uh, toward the end of its existence. Tank Abbott. Battle Royal. Sid Vicious, whoo, if you ever saw the video of him breaking his leg, you know, when he jumped from the top rope, that should have been the image they had for top rope. <laughs> him landing on his leg and, oh my god, he snapped the bottom part of his leg in half. It was, it's gruesome. I mean, if you really want to see it, look it up on YouTube. But it is uh, vicious. No pun intended. Rowdy, Rowdy Piper. One of the best. I met him at WrestleMania 30, got a photo with him, got him to autograph my... Uh, WWE 50 book, a really wonderful guy, and I'm glad I got to meet him before he passed away. Hacksaw Jim Duggan. There's Vampiro. I interviewed Vampiro 
Um, cool guy, great documentary about the fall and rise of Vampiro. Nail in the coffin, check it out. Referees, you got Nick Patrick. They're on the ground. Got a little niche. Charles Robinson went on to WWE and had a great career. He's still doing it. Sting. Sting is awesome. I mean, he was the you know WCW mainstay. Then he went to TNA uh, and had an incredible run. Just really amazing. And Vampiro, like I was talking about a minute ago. You know, underrated wrestler, huge in Mexico. And he's doing better than ever right now outside of the wrestling business. So wish him well. Suplex, you know, in case you don't know what that is. <laughs> Jerry Flynn and Ming. Lots of wrestlers say that Ming is one of the most legitimately tough guys in the business ever. So you can read all about him here. In this book. Body slam. You know, in case you don't know what the heck a body slam is. Here it is. Uh, one thing I do have to point out is that people who don't watch wrestling will refer to uh, things that are not a body slam as a body slam. Uh, same thing with drop kick. I don't know what they're thinking, but you know, this is what a body slam is. If you're not doing this, it's not a body slam. And we saw the cat, Ernest Miller, earlier in the book, and here is his section. Hugh Morris, he would go on to the WWE and become a trainer. I believe it was at the Performance Center, and had a nice little run there, too. Pay-per-views. This is similar to the WWE Encyclopedia, where they have certain sections devoted to programming. So this is very small, but it's cool to see all the logos, and just read a little bit about it. And, of course, some of these have carried over to WWE, right? Halloween Havoc is about to take place. NXT Halloween Havoc, so that's pretty cool that they're resurrecting it. And there you go, here are all the people who were involved in creating this book. See, first American edition, 2000. So this book came out in 2000, and WCW went out of business the following year. So there you have it. You just saw every single page in WCW, The Ultimate Guide from DK. So that's it for now. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this look at a retro wrestling book. Have a great day.